one more time. Hello and welcome back. My name is Berit and today I want to talk about why our feelings for fiction are real or why our feelings in fiction are real. So I guess we've all pretty much experienced that when we engage with a story in whatever form, when we read a novel or when we watch a film, we often feel things and sometimes those feelings can be very strong. We root for characters, we suffer when they suffer, we are happy when they are happy. And in that sense, I'm gonna tell you zero new things today. But I just wanna highlight some of how that works. How do our brains and bodies reproduce the emotional responses that we feel when we engage with stories? Just to give you a little bit of context, I'm taking my PhD in Nordic literature and some of the theories that I use for my textual analyses are cognitive theories which is basically why I've been reading about that kind of stuff lately. And I just find it fascinating. So I thought I'd share some of the main points of that. So when we open a book or start to watch a film, we know that we engage with something that is unreal, that is fictional. But somehow we shove that knowledge aside in order to be able to emotionally and cognitively engage with what is actually told in the story. And different scholars have called this process recentering, relocating, or transporting, which underlines the uh, mental activity of going away from the world that you actually inhabit and recentering to a fictional world uh, which you read about. And how do we recenter? A narrative theorist called Marie Law Ryan has formulated a principle that I find very interesting and helpful here, which is called the principle of minimal departure. And that principle basically states that when we build a fictional world in the process of reading, for example, we build that world as closely to the actual world that we know as possible. And we will only make adjustments to that world whenever the story tells us to do so. So when the text tells me to adjust something from what I know from the real world, I will do it, otherwise I won't. For example, when I read a book, I will assume that the sky in that story world is also blue, unless the text tells me it has another color. So how does that cognitively work? There is a theory about embodiment or mental simulation that states that when we engage with fiction, a certain set of neurons in our brain is triggered and activated. And those neurons are called mirror neurons. And with the help of those mirror neurons, we basically map or simulate whatever we read about, the feelings, the situations, the events, and so on. Mirror neurons were discovered in the 1990s in the brains of macaque monkeys. What the researchers did was they examined which neurons are activated in the brain of a monkey while he performs an action. I think in the experiment he was reaching for something. And then they examined another monkey who was watching this first monkey reaching for something. And what the researchers found out was that in the second monkey's brain, the same neurons were activated by merely observing the action being performed. So in other words, our brains get stimulated in the same way, whether we perform an action ourselves or whether we watch an action being performed. And the same goes for emotion. When I see someone express a certain emotion, my brain is stimulated in the way as if it was me who was experiencing that emotion. And basically that system also applies to fiction. So when we mentally construct situations, when we watch a movie, when we read a book, um, our brains get stimulated basically in the same way as if we were actually experiencing these situations in the real world. And I think that's pretty cool. So when we have feelings for things that happen in stories, no matter if they are positive or negative, Biochemically speaking, uh, these feelings are real because for our brain it doesn't make much of a difference because the basic stimulation is actually the same. So I know that you know that those feelings are real because you feel things when you read, when a book makes you cry or something. I mean, that's, that's a pretty strong sign that you actually feel something. So as I said, in that sense, this is no new information to you, I guess. But um, I just want to add that on this biochemical level, 
it really doesn't make much of a difference because the stimulation is the same and I think that's pretty fascinating that my brain reacts the same way when I read fiction as it does when I actually experience something in the outside world. Now I'm interested to know what stories, novels, comics, films have given you strong emotions that have stuck with you. Where have you reacted strongly on an emotional level? Where have you experience that your feelings are real. I'm interested in both positive and negative feelings. When I was thinking about this video, I realized that I mostly notice that my feelings are real when we're talking about sad feelings. But even then there are, there are stories that impact me more than others, which I also find pretty interesting. There are some stories where I can feel sad or mad or happy or whatever and then an hour later the feeling is gone and I'm kind of back to myself and then there are other stories that kind of stick stick longer with me. As an example for that maybe um, when I was reading Lord of the Rings I cried quite a few times during the last third I'd say and the same also goes for the film. I'm always a wreck when I'm done with that. With that. <laughs> um, but that feeling of having accomplished this journey together with the fellowship of the ring and you know having having accompanied the characters through middle earth through that time through their struggles and desperations that kind of stuck with me a bit longer like maybe a, a day longer and one of the main reasons why i made this video was that i recently saw a series where something happened that kind of stuck with me for several days and I realized that it is not often that stories have that much of an impact on me. It's, it's not so seldom that I cry in stories, but it doesn't happen often that I go on for days thinking about what might have gone differently. Could we have avoided a certain situation? In that case, I won't tell you what series it was because it would be the biggest spoiler ever but in that case there was a character who committed suicide and I was a wreck afterwards for the rest of what I watched um, but also for days after I was constantly thinking about why has this happened what could have gone differently how could we have avoided this and so on so we all knew before this video already that when we read something or when we watch something for that matter that our feelings are real and i wanted to contribute just some thoughts on why those feelings are real because i find it very cool that cognitive research has shown that for our brain the difference between fiction and reality is really not that big but I still feel like I now found out more about how real my feelings when I read and watch stories actually are and I think that's pretty fascinating so I hope you enjoyed this little video about cognitive thoughts on stories I will link the articles that I pretty much refer to concerning this video in the description box as well as a TED talk uh, which is called Why Reading Matters which also goes basically in the same direction which I found very interesting to watch. So go check that out if you found this interesting. And with that I'm gonna say bye and maybe I'll see you in the next one. Bye! <laughs>